And welcome back to Metro Morning Live and Metro Midday Live. Joining me right now is my good friend, good, good friend, Guyana G. Johnson. We call her Gigi. She is the uh, board chairman for the Jackson State University Development Foundation. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm glad you're here with me. Thanks for having me. Okay. You, everything went all right? Yes. Everything is going well. <laughs> That's why I'm here to say everything is going well. Well, well Ms. Guyana, just tell me a little bit about being the board chairman for the Jackson State University Development Fund. For those who not, who may not know what it is, mm -hmm. tell us what that is. So the Jackson State University Development Foundation was founded under the leadership of Dr. Peoples mm -hmm. in 1969, and it was designed to collect, hold, invest, and provide proper governance over all privately donated dollars to the university. Wow. And since 1969, the creation date, mm -hmm. today we have about $45 million in assets under management. You know, that is $45 million more than I have. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Ms. Gata, do, do, do people donate to this, or how does that work? Well, here's the thing. It's any donation that comes to Jackson State. Mm -hmm. If it's athletics, the math department, uh, uh, WJSU, mm -hmm. whatever some, whenever someone is donating, that money ultimately comes into the care of the Jackson State University Development Foundation, which has an independent, formal board of directors. Within that board of directors, I am currently serving as the board chair. The board is, um, the mission mm -hmm. is to collect dollars and also provide university support. So for example, what if the university needed to build housing, but they wanted to go through a public-private partnership? That is when the university would, would partner with the foundation we would come in and help to get that type of project together. Uh, we also um, have 13 people now, mm -hmm. so we are a little low on people, but there are 13 very dedicated people in order to make sure that we are fiscally sound over the $45 million. Wow, now does this account for everything at the university? Maybe JSU TV, JSU Radio, does that, is that part of it? Or yes, could that be part of it? and so what it is is, is if it's privately donated dollars, it's WJSU, it's, like I said, the, I was a math major, so it's the math department, it's uh, the Sonic Boom of the South, it's everyone on campus where someone outside has donated dollars. And there are two types. There's a scholarship, and there are also these endowments. The endowments I love the best because they have a perpetual nature, meaning when people donate to an endowment, uh, the minimum is $25,000, and you can c complete it in five years. Mm -hmm. But once you create it, it lasts in perpetuity. All we are able to do under our mandate is use the interest in order to create scholarships. Wow. And so as long as that principle is there, it is constantly kicking off interest. Now, there are some schools, very large schools, that have billion-dollar endowments, but we have ours is, is sizable. It is $45 million, and one of the things that the board would like to do is to be able to bring more attention to what we're doing mm -hmm. so people feel safe and they trust that we are being good stewards over their money so that they can continue to help our students grow. Wow, that is incredible. Now, aside from being the, the, the board chair for this, you are involved with overseeing a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell me about that? Well, uh, yes, in comparison to the $45 million, uh, I am responsible for a global team. My title is Head of Global Fund Ratings, and we're responsible for providing ratings for $5 trillion in assets under management. Uh, I work for S&P Global. Trillion? Trillion with a T. How, 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 okay, first of all, I don't know. <laughs> Thousands is a little bit for me. But trillion is after billion? Far after billion. Yes. Wow. It's quite a few commas. Uh, but it you know, it's it's and it's not just the dollar amount. Uh, we provide ratings in, in seven different currencies as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the yen, the the dollar, the Canadian dollar, just it's it's multiple currencies. Uh it it is an opportunity that I think I have had because one, I started at Jackson State, mm -hmm. 
and I was a, I received a Bachelor of Science in Math, uh, and I went from there to The Ohio State University College of Law. Mm -hmm. And so I leveraged my law degree in the financial markets. And so being able to, uh, I've had opportunities that have given me the ability to do fiscal uh, management. I've been able to do uh, strategic plans and execute them well, mm -hmm. to have uh, operational efficiencies. And now what I'm doing is, is taking all of that knowledge that I have and I'm using it for Jackson State and now have figured out a way to leverage it for corporate donations and fundraising. Now, growing up, did you, you said you, you were a math major. Did you always like math? Oh, Rob, 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 Rob. I grew up in Clarksdale, Mississippi. And Sam my Cook. Sam Cook, Tina Turner. Tina Turner from Clarksdale? She lived in uh, Clarksdale. Wow. There's a lot of great things in Clarksdale. Yes, ma'am. Morgan Freeman lives right outside of Clarksdale. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And I'm from Clarksdale. And you're from Clarksdale. Well, you're the most famous one. <laughs> but you, you like numbers growing up? Well, I did like numbers. I was really good in numbers, competed in a lot of different math competitions. But I think my ability to be really fiscally sound, attention to detail, and the integrity that I received came from my father. And he was the one that was always the treasurer for whatever unit he was over. Mm -hmm. One of them being the Iota Omicron chapter of Omega Sci Fi. Mm -hmm. And what, whenever he was the treasurer or the financial person for whatever it was, the church, the fraternity, the whatever, really it was me. Mm -hmm. So I learned very early on about fiscal responsibility, mm -hmm. um, budgets, and integrity in the numbers and just being a woman of your word from my father from a very early age. Mm -hmm. And so then I came to Jackson State and it made sense for me to be a math major uh, and then the other things just came naturally. Uh, my grandmother, my father's mother lived with us. She was really, really into two things, education and um, building wealth through real estate. Mm -hmm. And so she passed that on to me. Building through real estate means you really have to make sure that your numbers are correct. So that's where I think I got it from. Wow, you don't really get, you know, see a lot of people that's interested in math. You know, I guess people's worst subject in school is math, like like mine. It was my worst <laughs> subject in math. You know, I hated it. But uh, that that is fantastic. That is fantastic. Um, how how would you, someone who's watching this, a student here, want to follow in your footsteps? Is that possible? It is absolutely possible, and it's why I work so hard to raise the money that I do and to build those corporate relationships. It just requires you to be diligent, to follow up, be authentic and true to yourself. I think you also have to be able to pivot. You know, like right now, we are going through another transition at Jackson State, but we are building on a very strong foundation that started back in 1877. Mm -hmm. And so I come here not only to do the board business, mm -hmm. but I volunteer my personal time with the students. I have uh, a mentee. I have two mentees. I have helped to rewrite resumes. I've helped to write papers. I've helped people compete with legal uh, arguments just because I feel a sense of uh, responsibility to give back. One of the things I've also done is, is I've, I came to Jackson State on a full scholarship and I wanted to figure out how much my scholarship was. So I went to my mother's house <laughs> and dug in all the paperwork <laughs> and figured out how much they were charging me. And the first thing I did was to make sure that every penny that Jackson State gave me when I was here, I have given that penny back to make sure that students behind me have the same opportunities that I had in order to go to Jackson State when they have a gap in their financial aid. Yes, ma'am. And, and I do the same thing. I always give Jackson, give, what is wrong with him? I always give back to Jackson State, you know, with every dime that I earn. Exactly. I, I, you know, I, give, I give back some of it. Exactly. And I think if everyone gave back something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but anyway, <laughs> you know, right. you know right. but, um, it's okay. It's okay. If everyone gave something. Yes, ma'am. And, it's, and it, it's not the amount so much as the, the getting into the habit of giving back. Right. And when you give back, it helps out our numbers. Mm -hmm. So we talk about Coach Prime. When he came, I think our giving back numbers were around 4%. Today, we're at 14%. And so that's not about the amount that was, give, was given, it's about the number of people that believe in the mission with their dollars. And when those numbers go up, it makes it much easier 
for us to go in and sell Jackson State for corporations in order to give money back, particularly like when you all were just having this fundraiser for WJSU. Did Coach Prime help or hurt the, the giving? Oh, I, I, I think that there were a confluence of things that happened at the same time. Right. We had uh, everyone's attention because it was a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, we had social unrest. Mm -hmm. And we had Jackson State that was already on the national, already known, burst onto the national scene when we aligned our interests with that of Coach Prime's. And so it just became a phenomenon. And so when I say people knew about Jackson State, but not on a national level like it was, there were people at my job on the East Coast that were instantly able to connect. Do you go to the school? I was like, yes, Coach Prime is my coach. And so what has happened is, is that the, the, the money came to, mm -hmm. and corporate, corporate dollars came to. And what we were able to do is, even after he decided to leave, we were able to continue that movement because we were now on the national scene. Uh, at the end of last fiscal year, we had raised about $7.1 million. And I checked last night because I knew I was coming to see you. We had raised $7.8 million, and we are not even through with the end of this quarter. So things, I think, are still going well because people believe in the brand and the mission of us educating children. Well, you know, you are fascinating. Oh, thank you. You, you are an amazing woman, and I, it's my pleasure to sit here with you. Why? I, I, this has been really good. You've made me feel really at home. I mean, you were busting at me before we came on air. You know, you yeah, I have to make sure you're yes, on point. And, and I don't want you to be—I <laughs> don't want you to be a stranger. Oh no, I am in Jackson frequently for games. Uh, if people call and say we have a major fundraiser we'd like for you to attend, mm -hmm. I'm absolutely coming. But no, if you see me, I'm begging for money for the students. Right. If I'm and here, thing, yes. I'm always asking for money, or I am trying to uh, quietly. I'm. I'm I'm very gregarious, but I'm very quiet about trying to make things happen for the university. And so sometimes I'm quietly having conversations with people just to see, you know, what we need. Uh, we do know we need to make sure that our children are safe. We do know that they need housing. We do know that they need to, to have, you know, basic mm -hmm. things like water. And so in those instances, I'm, I'm being effective, but I'm just quiet. And I don't want your audience to think that the foundation is out of sight, out of mind. It's not. We're leveraging the contacts we have for the benefit of the university because we recognize Jackson State is Jackson, Mississippi. Yes, ma'am. And, and again, you, you're the chairman for the Jackson State University Development Foundation. Yes. People need to know that. Yes. Okay, you don't know that. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? I know that you, uh, you, you like, uh, I see here you like photography, performing arts, water sports, and all of this. Yes, my favorite sport is, although football, Absolutely, I'm a football fanatic, mm. but my personal favorite sport is skiing. Skiing? Skiing, water skiing, yes. Water skiing? Yes. Wow, not scuba diving. I'm sorry. Surfing. Surfing. In Hawaii. I like surfing. You like surfing in Hawaii? I like the waters in, I was like, what did I say? I like the waters in Hawaii. Really? They're a little bit easier uh -huh. and warmer. Yeah. I, that, the only thing with that that kind of throws me off are uh, mm -hmm. little things called sharks. So I don't <laughs> want, to, want to fool with that. You only live once. <laughs> Ms. Guyana, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Anything else you want to say? No, just I'd like to, um, to say to the listening audience that they would really continue to give to Jackson State in any capacity. We are responsible for all of the privately donated dollars, and there is stable, sound, fiscal, responsible people over those dollars. And so we always go through change, we always go through transition, and that is just an unprecedented opportunity for us to pivot as a family. But that does not mean that the dollars that you all have donated are not being used well. So just continue to give to Jackson State University for the benefit of the university and the students. That's great. And the next time I see you, don't act like you don't know. Uh, don't act